Elements of Jazz, your visual jazz experience. Uh, Mr. Lorber, I just want to say thank you so much for being gracious enough to do this interview for Elements of Jazz. Uh, your childhood growing up in Philly? Okay. Um, well, uh, you know, every, there's a lot of cities that have musical, uh, her, you know, a musical heritage and have a lot of musicians that come from that town. And Philadelphia is definitely uh, that way. I think I was lucky to, to grow up there. Um, but I came from a musical family. My mother played the piano. And so when I was just a little kid, I was went to bed every night and I'd hear my mother play. And I had two older sisters that were taking piano lessons. So everybody was just having so much fun making music. And the and the piano was sort of the center of the household. And uh, so it just seemed very natural, you know, that I'd want to have fun like everybody else was playing music. So I started very early. And um, I also had uh, I had I had a bunch of cousins, most of them like back in, you know, I was growing up in the 50s and 60s. So. Uh, folk music was real big. I had I had cousins that were into folk music, but I had this one cousin that was really into jazz. And of course, when when all the cousins would get together, you know, all those folk music guys, they would be over here, and I'd be hanging out with my uh, my cousin that was the jazz drummer, and he turned me on to. He gave me this little record collection that consisted of um, a Thelonious Monk album, a McCoy Tyner album, and a couple other things, and it really made a huge impression on me. And so I was, I was just lucky to um, be influenced by music in a real positive way. And I think Philadelphia, in a way, you know, just what was on the radio and what was in the air and what was happening, it, it, was, it was a pretty musical place to go. Paul Jackson Jr. on the guitar. Well, Paul and I worked a whole lot together for many, many years in the studio, but it's very, very unusual for us to play live. It's a real treat. So thank you, Paul. Thanks for coming out and playing with us tonight. So we're going to play a lot of music from my last CD, the Now Is The Time record. We're very lucky to get a Grammy nomination from that record. So... Could you talk a little bit about the early years in Portland, Oregon, creating the Jeff Lorber Fusion Band? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I moved to Portland in, uh, I guess, 1973. And, um, and you wouldn't think that would be a really good place to start a career, but actually it was. There was like, there were quite a few good musicians there to collaborate with. And, uh, you know, before that, I was a music student in Boston. And Boston was kind of a hard town to get started in because, uh, it's just one of those places where it's just kind of, there's so many students, so many musicians, and there's not that many places to play, but somehow in Portland, it was really friendly. It was really friendly to, to young bands starting out. There was a ton of like taverns and bars and stuff, and there was, there was good players, and uh, yeah, so that's, I just decided I was gonna do it. I started my, my little uh, Jeff Lorber Fusion group, and um, you know, and uh, we were lucky to kind of get a, get a record deal on a small label, and that's what sort of launched my career. We all consider you the father of Jazz Fusion. Um, you know, how would you say that Jazz Fusion has evolved throughout the years? Well, um... I mean, jazz fusion in um, like in the '70s was so exciting. There were just so many, uh, so many great bands. Of course, Miles Davis, you know, is the the, the biggest innovator. But Weather Report, uh, Chick Corea, Return to Forever, Mahavishnu Orchestra, Tony Williams, Lifetime, you know, the CTI records, all the great stuff coming out of San Francisco, out of Fantasy Records. There were just so many exciting and innovative records that were being made. And uh, I think that was an exciting time for music in general, even pop music too, and R&B, you know, groups like Earth, Wind & Fire and Tower of Power, I mean, and even James Brown, I think is an important, uh, Sly Stone, like all the, all those rhythms, all those uh, music, it's, it's, it's all really important. And, uh, you know, it, it's nice that, um, 
people uh, feel like I contributed something, I'm, I'm really glad that, that uh, you know, that it's, it's viewed that way. I, I hope that's the case. Um, you've had such an amazing career in music. How do you explain your longevity in the field of jazz? Well, I mean, I'm very grateful, believe me. I mean, I, I love playing music. Uh, I love writing and I love producing and, and making records and touring. I mean, all, all of those things uh, give me so much joy. And uh, I'm so grateful to have a career doing that. And uh, also playing with great musicians. I mean, tonight we're going to play with some of the best. And uh, I'm really, that's, that's why I'm really looking forward to that. But, um, I mean, one thing that I think's really helped in terms of you're talking about longevity. Uh, I mean, I'm always listening. I'm always trying to find something exciting and something new and something fresh. You know, I'm always looking for something that excites me. So I can, when I sit down and I write new music and record new music and play it, that excitement that I feel, that gets transmitted to, you know, people that are listening. And uh, another thing that I think is really important is I don't, I don't try to do it all, all by myself. I like to collaborate with people. And, um, you know, uh, I think if I did it by myself, a lot of my stuff would sound the same. But I'm all, I always look for people that can stimulate me and kind of help me grow and help. I, I can learn from, you know, people that I respect. So my last, I guess, five, six, seven records, they've been co-written and co-produced with various people. Right now I'm working a lot with Jimmy Haslip, the bass player who's, who's going to be here playing with us tonight. So I think that really helps is to uh, is to always sort of expand your mu musical universe by inviting other people to um, to take part in the in the creative process.
Well, Paul Jackson is here. Uh, we're playing with me tonight, and he's, you know, as I'm sure you probably know, uh, you know, he's one of the finest guitarists out there right now. He's very successful, very visible on television because he was in, in American Idol. He's in the Tonight Show band. And he's also, uh, you know, one of the incredible things about him actually is that he's been a very, very prolific and successful studio musician from a very early age. I think when he was only about 17, he was already, you know, playing on tons and tons of records. I mean, if you look at all the records he's played on, it's just, it's mind boggling. And, and actually, we go back. I mean, we first met each other um, and uh, started working together in around 1980. So we go way, way back. I mean, he was still living with his parents. He was living in Inglewood. And I remember going over to his house and he had a 24 track machine like right in the middle of his living room. So that was pretty unusual, you know, <laughs> for, a, for, for a young man uh, to have something like that. But uh, yeah, so we, we, Paul, you know, he's one of my favorite players. And, um, you know, we've worked together a, a lot over the years. I've worked a little bit on his records. He's worked a lot on my albums and stuff I produce. And we're working right now on um, a new album that's, that, uh, that I'm just finishing up right now. It's called Galaxy. And it'll probably, I think in the U.S., it's only, it, it's, it'll be coming out in January. I think it's a long wait for the U.S. release. And I'm also working with Paul on some stuff for his next album too. So uh, you know, that's a that's a collaboration that's uh, that's been uh, really, really just uh, a lot of fun over the years to to get to know him and and work with him. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking time out for Elements of Jazz to do this video for us, and we certainly appreciate it, and have a wonderful show. Break a leg. Thanks, sir.